All right, good afternoon, Lemon Grove School District families. I am so excited to be with you all today. And for our guests, um, we have Ms. Gina Jones and Reagan with us. And we're gonna be talking about some goal setting um, on a weekly, monthly, and quarterly basis. And I'm just really excited for this opportunity. I actually met Ms. Jones in a coffee with the principal at Lemon Grove Academy Middle. And she just mentioned that she did that and I reached out and. She was very gracious to just give us her time and let us know about the strategies that have worked with her and her kids at home. So I'll just let them introduce themselves and let's get this conversation started. Hello, uh, my name is Regina Jones. I am a mother of four and currently an active duty chief in the Navy and I'm transitioning this year into retirement and starting a home-based business. And um, I'm Megan Jones. I um, attend at LGA Middle. I'm in the seventh grade. And yeah, that's me. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Well, thank you for being here. And let's just get started. How about we talk about just the goal setting you mentioned at the Coffee with the Principal? Uh, yeah, and, and how that goes and how that started and how it's going. Okay, so goal um, setting with my children started with. Um, it's been a work in progress. Um, I started when they were very young of always asking them who they wanted to be, what they wanted to be uh, when they grew up. And a lot of that came in from exposure. Um, they, I got some wild answers. They used to say, you know, I want to be a football player. I want to be this, you know, I have mostly daughters. And over time, I um, introduced um, new things to them and exposed them to, um, you know, different types of books um, people in their lives that um, were lawyers or doctors. I even um, took them on a couple of tours um, that are free here in San Diego to you know public facilities um, where they can see people in action and make a connection of what it is and what type of job that they wanted. And that helped me to create you know this goal setting realm for them. So we did weekly goals to and monthly and quarterly goals to help them reach their end goal um, because at as a child, I didn't always love school. They don't always love school. They don't always want to be there. Just as an adult, I don't always love my job and want to work, but I know the incentive. I know the goal and I know um, the reward that I get from it, whether it's monetary or, you know, just some satisfaction in it. So I had to find a way to connect my children so that they could stay on top of their game in school. So the weekly goals, um, we sit down Sunday night and discuss like, okay, you got your school clothes out, your backpacks are ready to roll. So what do you want to accomplish this week? And um, give you an example, what are some of your weekly goals or your weekly goals? Some of my weekly goals are one, to get down my mile time at school. Two, is that turning my work, uh, turning my homework on, on time, and like complete all my assignments, all my missing ones, if I have any, and like get good grades for that one week so I can like look up to something for me to do or get a reward for that whole week of achieving stuff. Can I ask a question um, for, for Reagan? What has been a memorable reward for you from like your goal accomplishment that you can remember? Um, maybe, I think one is either a vacation or like going to a friend's house or eating at a restaurant or basic things. But I would say definitely nice shoes. Education and getting our shoes. Nice. <laughs> Sounds like it's a lot. There's a lot of variety with that too, which is exciting. Yeah. So when we discuss the weekly goals, um, I try and remind them of what their weekly goals were, what they set to do. Um, and in that, it's very, it's it's kind of tasking. And sometimes I don't want to do it, but I make sure that it's done because it's very important to give them something to look forward to. And speaking of the rewards at the end of the week, it's not like always something financially. Um, we're blessed to be living in San Diego and they do a ton of free things. Like if anyone's familiar with Choice Lake, they have free archery classes, free fishing for all ages. And it's usually on the weekends. Um, there's some things that they do even during the week. so you know, the kids are meeting those goals, it's a great reward for them to have like something to look forward to or something to do. And a lot of times us as parents, we're gonna buy them some shoes or buy them a shirt or know that they need something anyway. But if you can connect it to, you've earned this, you know, you did a great job. 
um, they can see the fruits of their labor. Mm -hmm. And then moving into like monthly goals, if they've reached all their goals for the week, it usually come, encompasses their monthly. Like she likes to be able to look at class dojo and see that there's no a missing sign, no missing assignments in it. Um, she has this track in her notebook and she can see that the times for her mile run have went down. And that's, you know, something that she looks forward to. And then the quarter, of course, we have, you know, progress reports and report cards that come out and it's a great look back. And the goals are all encompassing of what they want to be when they grow up. So I've asked Reagan over the years and it's changed um, at some point, but I think she's kind of sticking to this one. Um, and that's her goal of being a lawyer. Wow, that's really awesome. Yes, we need more lawyers <laughs> for sure. And what, what was it that kind of drove you to, to that path? Um, I had read this book about um, this woman who was, um, she was growing up not in a like stable life or in like one of the good neighborhoods and stuff. And she had um, grown up to be a lawyer. So it kind of drove me towards being a lawyer and also how many, how less of like when I'm watching like TV or stuff, I can barely see how many um, black female females like our um, African Americans doing that one thing of being a lawyer. That's awesome. Do you know what kind of law you want to practice yet? Um, not yet, but I hopefully I will know in college or. Mm -hmm. maybe you have time. You have time. And with them choosing a career path, I, I don't think it's ever too early or too you know to start that. And like exposure was a big is a big thing for me. Um, exposing them, whether it's by reading a book, um, watching a movie, watching a documentary, or taking them like, okay, let's go on to the courthouse. Like there's tons of people who work in these fields who love to like open up their doors and welcome you in. If you have a child that may be considering police work, it's not a big deal just to go to the police station and say, hey, can we get like a tour? This one's a spy. And they'll talk to them and they'll show them. If you can put a vision in their mind or a job, something for them to aim towards, um, you know, these kids are amazing. They, they are so much more intellectual, so much more talented than we as parents sometimes get them credit for. I know we want to shelter them. This is my babies. No, oh, we, we have time for this. We have time for that. But if you empower them and if you get something on their mind for them to shoot for, they will amaze you. They, mm -hmm. they will go. They'll take off. Yes. Yes. I'm so glad you said that. Yeah. I mean, it, it's great that we have to let them you know, explore things, but how do they explore if they don't know if it's an unknown? And, you know, I'm going to be honest with you, like, um, of my four children, <laughs> you know, my oldest daughter, she is, you know, great. She wants to be a doctor. She wants to be a surgeon and she's never really changed. She went from a veterinarian to like a surgeon. And now she's like, I want, she's a freshman at, um, health science high in middle college. She's a mm -hmm. freshman. She's taking sophomore classes and she's taking some college courses right now. And that all came from her seeing a movie and it was called um, Something the Lord Made. And she saw them at John Hopkins working on a heart. And she's just like, I want to help babies. I want to, you know, do this. I want to do these things. And then to follow up with exposure. And I told her, you know, you get the grades and I'll find it. And mm -hmm. I don't always have the answers. Um, I utilize my resources. I get online. I talk to family members. I talk to the staff, teachers, um, the principal, actually. Um, the principal is the one who told me about health science high and medical that they let the children volunteer at hospitals and I was like wow I would have yeah. never known that yeah you know? shout like, out to Ms. Mohammed thank you Ms. Yeah. Mohammed <laughs> like you know what I have something and I was like thank you and we went right over there and they took it right on in um and just these you know it's it's been um not always super easy and I have to remind myself to to you know ask, did you ask them about their goals did you communicate with them about school and um to make it fun the rewards are you know again whether it's something that you pay for if we were going to go out to eat anyway I'll like save that money for Friday and we'll do it on Friday like okay we're going to go out to you know and happy hour mm -hmm. for kids appetizer menus like there's things that are you know not super expensive but just for them to be out and again exposure or seeing things and then even you know at home it, now that they're streaming movies that are playing in the theaters Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, I'm going to purchase this movie off Amazon and we're going to, you know, have popcorn and do this movie night. Like the Venom is coming out on Friday or something. So yeah. that's something that we're going to do for reward. Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Awesome. And so earlier you, you mentioned something about, you know, jumping into the unknown. And when you first started this, like you jumped as a parent into the unknown. Can you kind of tell us a little bit more about that okay. beginning, you know, like sticking to it and like making sure that you did it, even if it was uncomfortable, whatever your process was, I'm really curious to kind of know what, what kind of propelled you to, to stick to it and, and make it a habit for your whole family. Okay. So being honest, I was like overwhelmed. You know, I have a really demanding job and my husband is also, we're dual military, we're both in the military and it's overwhelming. Right now I have kids at three different schools. It's hard. And um, to, you know, work, still come home, dinner, I have laundry, I'm going to have to clean up. I have all this stuff going on. And I was like, wait a minute, something has to get in line. Something has to be structured around here. And my kids were, um, hmm, <laughs> <laughs> they wouldn't be the most honest sometimes about them having homework. They'd be like, oh, I don't have homework. No, I'm fine. I'm fine. And I'm on class dojo like, oh, yes, you did. Like, you know, and I'm like, this cannot keep happening to me. No way. Like, we've got to do something. So I started doing backpack checks. And I was like, I have to tell my, you have to check their backpacks. Like, check their backpacks. For the two things that helped me to keep doing it. One is because my son, he's in first grade. He will hoard whatever in his backpack, you know, whether it's some old milk from lunch, like, why do you have this? Or, you know, and just making sure I spray it down because of COVID and what's going on. Um, so my, my pattern for this has been to, they go to school and they come home and we sit in the living room and I turn the TV on and I keep it kind of low and I have a conversation with them. And this works in my favor because it's four of them. And I asked them like, so how was school? It's not like an interrogation. It's not a pressure. It's just for them to open up. And sometimes they'll be watching TV. They'll chime in here and there. They'll talk amongst themselves. They're like, oh, well, we had this test or we had this going on. And it helps me to know where their head is at and what's going on at the, on the campus. And then I was like, all right, let's do homework. And then they'll, we all sit together and do homework. Um, one, so I know that they're getting it done. And this is where the house focuses on homework. I don't have a lot of stuff going on in the house. I'm not doing this because it's distracting to them. And they'll, you know, even my son, he'll be like, I'm done. You know, no, you're not. You're not done. You know, but I have to sit with him because he's interested in what I'm doing or he wants to go and play. But if everybody is engaged hmm. and I usually take this time to like check emails, um, do grocery lists. I'm like, write down what I need to do for the hmm. day. Like anything that can keep me here. And sometimes I'm not gonna lie, I doze off. <laughs> I wake up like, wait, wait, what are you doing? You know, and it just happens. And I, I used to hate, hate sitting here. I'm not going to lie. I used to like hate sitting here because I'm a, I'm a go, go, go type of person. I'm like, I could be starting dinner. I can be doing dishes. And sometimes I do, you know, I'll get up and, but I make sure I come back in and check in with them. How's it going? You know, but um, getting them to come in, we have a conversation and during that they eat, they have their snacks, you know, they wash up, of course. And then um, we go into homework. And then while they're doing that, I'm like, pass me your backpack. I look through their folders. I look through like, is this, this has been graded? Is this trash? I go through, throw this out, you know, or keep, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. And um, it's a routine that we set. And then when they're done, I look over it, look over the homework. Okay, you're free. Go, you know, go do whatever you're going to do until we re-engage again for, you know, dinner, shower, get your school clothes out for tomorrow. And then that's our weekly process. Mm -hmm. But on Sundays, we set those goals. And during that week, I'm like, you're, you're the one who said you wanted to get your homework done. You're the one who said this. And I remind them, you're the one that wants to be a doctor. You want to be a lawyer. And I want this for you, too. These are the things that's going to make it easier. Doing your homework, getting good grades. Mm -hmm. And it's a structure that I kind of set and maintain and keep it and keep talking to them and encouraging them. Right. And, um, you know, I have friends that do stuff like they get the expo markers and they write on the mirrors and put like encouraging words for their kids when you wake up in the morning and they're like brushing their teeth. And like, what does that say? You know, one, it keeps them on the time limit of brushing their teeth for two minutes because they're reading like, oh, is this, you know, you, know, you can <laughs> yeah. do it. You're going to get an A today. Today's going to be a wonderful day. You are smart. You are a conqueror. You are mighty. You are capable. You know, I love you. You can, you got this. Because it's always good when you know somebody's got your back. And yeah. even as children, I know we sometimes want to look over it like, oh, they're just kids. They'll get through. They have real life stuff going on in school. It's real life to them. Mm -hmm. Serious. Yeah. At that age. I really like that. I really liked how I think it's important to kind of recognize like 
it's time for you also to get some things done. So it's that modeling, right? And we talked about this on our previous call of like modeling to them, like, hey, mommy has things to do too. And so like I'm paying bills or I'm scheduling or I'm setting my own goals and they get to see that interaction with you too so that they can say like oh like it's just part of being an adult there's these things you have to do and maybe that's not fun but you're gonna do them anyway yeah. and I really like too that like the accountability piece of like when they're feeling like not wanting to do something reminding them like well this is the goal and it's not the goal I set for you like you set it for yourself so it's that inter kind of motivation yeah mm-hmm. what do you think Reagan oh go ahead um I think it actually works I think it's like once I'm done with my homework and stuff, I go to sh- I go shower, I get my clothes out, and then I get ready for the next day. And then like it gives me a lot of free time, like what I can do, like I can I can think about what I haven't done or what have I have already did or anything that I have may have missed or I've like done anything. And it's um, I feel like it's not it's not too strict, but it's not like like amazingly free. Yeah, but it's. I feel like it's like I I actually know what I need to do this. Um, let me do it right now, because like it's not like oh let me do it later, because it's just really like straightforward and like something I need to do. Mm-hmm. And, like, you know, the expectation. Yeah, there you go. And then like I have that when I'm done, I'm done. So I don't have to like worry about home life. Like oh, did I finish this? Or did I do that? So it's it's really easy. I have a question um, for you both. Have you gotten to the point where it's like you come home from school and on your own, you start like getting your stuff out and getting the homework done? Or are there times where you still need to like the reminders to get started because maybe like we get off track a little bit or how's that going? Um, it's kind of the both, but mostly we're like getting our homework done. And stuff. And then, yeah, it's, it's the age group thing. So like yeah. my first grader, he still tries, he still tries to make a run for it. He does. Um, my sixth grader, um, she'll like dive right into it, you know, have her snack. She's like, oh, okay, I know what I need to do. Um, Reagan is always really good about it. Like, okay. Um, my freshman sometimes, she's like dead when she comes home. She's like, I'm tired. It's a lot of work. I'm going to get to it. I'm going to do it, mom. And because she's like a night owl, she likes mm-hmm. to like slow process with everything. Like, even though I've set my schedule for them, I know what I want them to do because it works for me. It structures for me. She's kind of getting older now to where she's like, I know what I need to do. I got it. I don't need to sit in the living room with all the kids and do my work. Like, mom, like, give me some space. But I'm like, depends. We'll see. You know, we're still working through it. I know that she's older and I'm realizing that she's changing and that she needs to be her own person and she's going that. And she's like, there's, and she'll like, she'll be like, wow, no trust, mom. Like, no trust. And I'm like, I trust you, but let me see your homework, you know? And yeah. Okay. And it's, it's learning for me. I know that this is going to be ever growing and ever evolving and um, just, you know, still trying to keep those standards and hoping that what I've laid the foundation that they build upon and they get their own way done. But yeah, we're, well, she's a, she's a, you know, working in progress, but mm-hmm. she still has managed to get straight A's. So I got to give her some space. That's awesome. That's so great. That's so good to hear. High school's hard, especially now. I can't even imagine. So kudos to your daughter for keeping up with all that. All of that. <laughs> yeah, Reagan got straight A's too. We did her, Yay! her meeting today and, and, and it helps. I know that the teachers are working very hard um, to create structure. They're working very hard to teach our students. And I know that it's been a immensely strong, hard year for families, staff, like, you know, kids um, and to come back and now get thrown into school and be there for these full days. They're tired, they're sleepy, they're not used to it, you know, and I'm, I, I got all ages <laughs> around here and I'm seeing the thing and I knew that it was, I needed some structure and I needed to get them back into the swing of things um, for them to be successful and to support the staff and what they have going on. And um, I can only imagine being in a class with kids who are not used to it now all of a sudden it, have gotten used to doing something else mm-hmm. and they're just happy to be around other kids probably a lot and yeah. then to help them and remind them like dude even in class you need to be giving your teacher you know your undivided attention it's you're there to learn like lunchtime is lunchtime that's your play time and all that but you know remember your goal what kind of adult you want to be in even you know from the highest highs to the lowest lows like if you don't if you're not planning for success then what are you planning for what do you what do you 
going to school for? What are you doing? And to be able to show them, you know, the small rewards weekly, bigger rewards as we go on, like the end of school year, you know, if everybody, and I put it on them so they, I get to use the sibling power, like, you know, um, my freshman is great because, you know, she's been there already. She can help them with their homework, but they also tell them like, look, I want to take a vacation at the end of the year, do your homework. Did you do your schoolwork? Like do what you're supposed to do. And they help each other stay on track. Yeah. That's awesome. That's great. Teamwork for sure. Yeah. Use it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and just like to the moms and stuff, like it's, it's, it's hard. It's hard laundry, grocery shopping, cooking, cleaning it, some, you know, working. And even if you're not like they, the kids get dropped off and we're picking before you know it, it's like, I got to go back and pick them up and I have to set my day around that. And then, um, even at times when I couldn't come home, um, when I couldn't be here to pick them up and to sit with them and do their homework, those plans that I set forth and I tell them setting an expectation for them, I want your homework done by this time like putting some parameters and some structure mm -hmm. um, helps. Cause there's some nights that I don't get to come home. You know, I'm in the military, I have to stay overnight and I don't see them until the next day. I need to know that they're gonna do what they're supposed to do. Even if they're staying, you know, at a friend's house or my, you know, one of my friend's house to keep an eye on them. The plan doesn't change. Mm -hmm. it's the same. You come home, you have your snack, you wash up, you do your homework. That's mm -hmm. your priority, that's your job, you know, and then we go on with the rotation, but they know the structure, they know the expectation, um, they have to hit it. They, yeah. you know, they know what I expect of them and I expect nothing less. And I set the bar high. I want you to get an A, that's mm -hmm. what I want you to do. And I feel that there's enough support and our children are, all of our children are smart enough to achieve that. Yes, absolutely. We can get I, I think a lot of the times they just, want to be given the opportunity to be told like I know that you're so intelligent and you're capable so like let's see let's see how far you can go and show me and yeah. I think it's okay um as parents to to say that to students and and have that like accountability and that like it's a way of support and saying like hey I see you like now show me what else you can do you know we celebrate everything from no tardies for not being late to class that's a celebration good job you know, you, you were on point, you did what you're supposed to, to do, you were where you were supposed to be, you were accountable, you know, mm -hmm. from anything, getting good grades in citizenship. Thank you for not giving your teacher a hard time <laughs> for, you know, raising your hand and for being respectful and not being disruptive, like anything, you know, even as athletics, you know, good job on your mile, great job for, you know, all those things, everything mm -hmm is a chance to celebrate your child and show them that you're, you are their biggest fan. You are rooting for them. You are cheering for them, you know? Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. I remember it. You mentioned that you tap into your community and oh. you know, the whole concept of it really truly does take a village. Can you kind of speak a little bit more about situations where you reach out to friends or family, or even when you have a friend look, look, um, take care of them while you're gone, like what conversations are had with your friends to kind of, help them understand the systems you have with your family, right? Right, so first is establishing the people who you know as your village mm -hmm. or your resources. And um, I'm not originally from San Diego. Um, my husband's family is in Texas. <laughs> um, my family is in Los Angeles and, you know, move out of the way. So I don't have any immediate family here, no blood relatives here. Um, but I do have, you know, friends um, and I, who have older children that I discuss things with, because, you know, this is all new for me. I'm raising children. It's untapped. I call, you know, my siblings and things like that. Um, but the things that force me to reach out, um, one is like something simple, right? Math. I'm a navigator and I do math formulas all day and I still struggle with some of their math work. I don't know the common core, the, this mm -hmm. new math is new to me. And it was very frustrating at a time when I was like, well, this is how I do math. And they're like, that's not right. But I'm like, it's the same thing. Well, my teacher wants me to show my work and I have to do it this way. And I get frustrated. Like, I can't help you. I don't know what you're talking about. Um, so I always, you know, call around like to my friends who I know are, I'm not going to say nerds. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say they're better in math than I. And say, hey, take a picture. I get on YouTube. 
I Google it. I call my friends like, hey, are you busy? No. Okay. So, you know, Ryan has this math problem. I, I can't, I don't know how to do it. I can't help it with it. Um, would you, can you take a look? And they're like, yeah, send me a picture. And then my friend will work out the problem and like have reasoning explanation down the side and then send it back through a picture. And I'm like, here, you know, or I'll put it on the phone, like, hold on here, you know, to get that help um, with yeah. math work. So something as simple as like math, it's like not my strong point. So, and I, and I tell them too, you know, reach out for help. Um, Class Dojo is a wonderful tool to even call back to the teacher and say, hey, we were struggling with number 11. So that one might be blank because I don't know. And she doesn't you know, can you please help us to look over it? And it's a communication piece. So it's not like the teacher's like, oh, you didn't do this. Like, okay, you are having some problems with this. Let me help you. And then the, the teaching starts. Mm -hmm. And then even like with help, like my neighbor right now um, at a time, she used to make sure that um, Reagan got picked up back and forth from kindergarten, you know, um, because of the timing and I had to be at work and I couldn't do it to this day, like, hey, I need help. And now it's changed. Her daughter goes to Monterey Heights. Mm. I have two kids there. So I pick up and drop off because I can. It's in my mm. schedule. But just speaking to that so that my kids wouldn't be late, like there's a great community of moms out there mm. and fathers too, aunties, you know, godparents, um, grandparents that are really a force um, and they all, we all want the best, what's best for our children. We all want um, to be able to um, support them. Mm -hmm. and just reaching out like, hey, you know, the girls need to be picked up. Can you grab them? Or I have duty overnight. Can they stay the night at your house and get them tomorrow? Or can you come stay the night at my house? And, you know, but just really not being afraid to say, hey, I need a little bit of help. Mm -hmm. Or, hey, I need um, some support. And you'll find that the people that you're talking to, they need help some days too. Yeah. And to be able to work together um, because it's for the kids, you know. Yeah. It's I, a really strong piece. Yes. I like the reassurance for parents of like, you don't have to do it alone, like ever. You know what I mean? And maybe it's difficult in the beginning to speak up and reach out, but eventually like you'll find that you can contribute to your own circle and your own community in other ways mm -hmm. as well. Um, and then Reagan, I'm curious, like seeing your mom be so resourceful and like not be shy to ask for help. How, how has that kind of impacted you and influenced the way like you ask for help or the way that you see um, just resources and community? Um, it does, it does like help a lot. Um, like the way I communicate with them is either sometimes I get their phone number because like maybe she's like maybe I'm busy or something and I ask for their help. Or maybe I end up going to their house and they help me with my work or they're older or their children that are older than me, they help me with mine or, and they, and I help their like younger, um, their youngers that they can't, that can't do their work or need help or anything. So it's like, it's like I build like a relationship with their children so I can help them and they can help me. And then like, we're now like a big friend group that helps each other with everything and it's really yeah that's awesome yeah and i'm and i'm really glad we're doing this because i think one of our goals with parent and family engagement at lemon grove is creating that community of support so i'm hoping with this you know you're kind of providing that knowledge to the community and then hopefully we can get other parents that have other expertise or want to share some knowledge to like you know, contact me and I'll put my email down so that, you know, you can contribute and we can do this with a different parent and they have something else to offer. So I think that we're hoping to get that momentum going of, of building that community within the parents because there's so, so much um, knowledge and, and resources and, and just strength within the Lemon Grove community at each school that we want to make sure we tap into that as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then um, uh, as far as the um, exposure thing goes on, even like with college, it's not too early mm -hmm. to expose them to college. When I was coming up, college just seemed like this big far off mystery to me. Like, how do you get in there? What do you get accepted to? Do the schools reach out to you? How do they even know about you? You reach out to them, like, what is this thing, you know, about college? And um, we've been lucky because Reagan has been able to tour some colleges. Um, she's been touring colleges for a while because of the track club that she runs in in, uh, in the city of San Diego. Um, when they went to the Junior Olympics, they were able to um, tour the KU um, 
uni uh, the university she's been to the um, Sooner campus in Oklahoma and um, there's always tours being offered even here at San Diego State um, and to just let them walk around that campus it's so huge you know it's giant and um, even the college kids are pretty cool you know they talk to them and you know they relate more to them than you know my age groups mm -hmm. uh, so they're taken away by it but it's exciting it's like oh I want to do this it's like when they're in you know before they go to school like I want to go to school because their siblings are going off to elementary mm -hmm. or you know your sibling goes high school and you're like oh man I can't wait to go to high school there's like this kind of when you see it and then to show them colleges and to get them to expose and being able to go to school out of state and you know see these universities up close or if, if you if given the opportunity and you know even here like San Diego State um, the City College, Cuyamaca, there's some great schools, um, Grossmont, even up to USC, UCLA, if you ever take a trip up to LA, like why not walk through the campus or <laughs> for their admissions hall and say, can we schedule like a quick tour? Can you show us around? And they're usually very welcoming or you can go online and book these things, but to give them something to look forward to. Mm -hmm. you know, why, why am I here? Why am I going to school to answer those questions of why for them? And what's in store for me? You know, what can I do? Mm -hmm. um, and it makes things seem a lot closer and not so far away. Yeah, more attainable, more mm -hmm. real, tangible. Yeah. That's great. Thank you for all of that. Is there anything else that you wanted to kind of share with us today? Nothing. Yeah, we're good. Um, no, just that. And then to tell the moms that you guys are doing a great job. No one tells the moms that you're doing a great job, parents. Yeah. <laughs> to school. They're going. I know it seems overwhelming. Um, it's very hard. I know that you have to be a million places at once. But once you set a schedule for the kids, they they're capable. They're mm -hmm. so capable of doing so much. Reagan cooks dinner sometimes. It's great. I love it. I'll drink That's it. awesome. <laughs> oh, what does she make? What do you make, Reagan? <laughs> <laughs> we get these like boxes they get delivered it's called hello fresh yeah hello fresh this is like some meals that you can like they can be like family friendly vegetarian pescatarian or yeah i think it's like now pescatarian yeah pescatarian yeah, yeah. pescatarian mm. so they was some new like everything then there's some new instructions and then you can make that meal yeah, so she so takes cool. the recipes. She follows them to the T. I oh. come in sometimes to help her if she's cutting something to watch, or you know, I'm just I sit in the living room. I give her a space and I let her because again, they're capable, mm -hmm. Super capable of doing things. And, but she likes to cook. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. I do. <laughs> I like to cook. I cook, but it's not one of my favorites. You know, but I do, and it's like I feel like I'm cooking the same thing over. So mm. HelloFresh was running this crazy deal. You get like 14 meals for like like 20 something dollars or something like that. Oh, wow. it's, it's like, they send you the box with all the ingredients. I mean, I know that's like so sideline, but. Um. <laughs> it's okay. Somebody could be like needing something like that for convenience. So yeah. yeah. I wanted to kind of try a vegetarian lifestyle for a little while, but I don't know vegetarian recipes. So I went on there and I ordered some boxes and they give you the recipe card mm. with all the ingredients. So you can kind of keep the cards and use them later without, you know, using the box, but. Yeah. Um, yeah, just letting the kids be great. That's why I say, let them be great. Let them do things while they're at home with you so you can help them and correct them and teach them mm -hmm. as opposed to when they're out on their own and you're like, oh my gosh, so many things, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did the whole, did the whole cooking start uh, because Reagan volunteer was it like, oh, I need some help. Can somebody help me cook? How did that get started? I think it's started with grandma. Yeah, my grandma just said she came down here for, I don't know how many days, but she came to like watch us. And she just started cooking in the kitchen. I just started to watch. And that's how I learned. And decided to start cooking just because it's cool. interesting and fun. Yeah. What, I what? Go ahead. What? I would have completely missed that cooking thing because I'm always in a rush and I'm on the go. And mm -hmm. I just, in my mind, I don't have time. I don't have time to, you know, a lot of things. Some things I'm great at, some things I'm not. I don't have time. Mm -hmm. It's okay. Mom, can I help you with that? Uh, no, because I can do it faster. So I'm like, but 
knowing that one day I have to show her this. She's going to have to learn or they're going to have to learn. But their grandma, I think um, me and my husband were both gone um, out to sea or something. And um, she came and um, watched, watched them and had Reagan in the kitchen with her and the girls in the kitchen, like giving them little jobs to do. And they enjoyed it. And then from then on, Reagan was like, can I make this, mom? And I'm like, mm all right fine <laughs> and I'll sit in the kitchen at the table and like do something else just so I could be present make sure yeah. the house is not getting burned down or she's not you know hurting herself or messing up food so I would sit in the kitchen but now um she's gotten the hang of it you know so and so now I tell them like you guys got dinner you and your sister figured out you're making dinner tonight mm -hmm. and it's great you get a yeah. break <laughs> well, yeah no that's important like self-care right and like kind of giving yourself a little time to breathe that's great it's great that they can help you what what grade were you in Reagan when that started maybe in first grade or oh. kindergarten maybe with your grandma that's so cool what about when you started cooking on your own um maybe around fifth grade nice wow responsible <laughs> that's so cool <laughs> wow and like that gave her a, an idea when grandma came. So every time, it wasn't just a one time, every time grandma came down, it was like, she would call them, oh, my sous chefs, they're going to mm -hmm. help me and assist me. They're going to grate the cheese. You're going to cut, you know, yeah. do this, you're gonna peel potatoes. You're going to start it, you know, with the, I call it the grunt work, you know, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, peel the corn, husk, you know, things like that to get them started. And um, every time she came down, they would know a little bit more and a little bit more. And they would come in the kitchen to me like, oh, mom, I'll do this for you. And it's like, who showed you I do that? Grandma? It's like, oh, thanks. OK. <laughs> you know, and it grew into mm -hmm. grandma helping them um, to them helping me. I mean, you know, and then to me being like, OK, this is something that they can do. This is not out of their reach. They got this. Mm -hmm. And they would kind of like step up to doing more stuff cool. yeah so sixth grade so now seventh grade she can cook a full meal and it's great that's <laughs> great that's gonna be handy when you go to college you don't have to depend on anybody and you'll be able to just do your own thing um so that's great it's gonna be super useful yeah oh cool and at some point um earlier you mentioned uh vision boards did you want to talk about that at all so i thought it would be real cool to do like a vision board with the kids and um your dad's about to come in i see san francisco <laughs> come in being about I, the vision boards and the girls were like mm. um at first they were like what's the point of that like i don't get it and i was like well vision boards are very important um because you get to see what you're doing and um so what I did was I started doing a vision board first. I did my first and I'm gonna show you guys. Yeah, yeah. If you can explain kind of what a vision board is and how you go about making one, that'd be great. So the vision board, um, if I can show you, is like attraction, entrepreneurship and wealth. These are things that I wanted to attract to me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so with my children, I wanted them to support each other more. So support and sibling love. So I showed a picture of that, my son being helpful. Um, education and champions because they all like kind of run track. So I wanted that to be um, a focal point because that's something that they want for themselves. Mm -hmm. um, success and a change in salaries and selfie starting my own business. So I took a dollar <laughs> and I wrote on it to show um, just, and no, a growth in salary. Mm -hmm. and, um, grateful and thankful for myself, self-love, self-fitness, um, and being confident. So I took a picture of a time in my life when I felt that. Mm. Um, with my marriage, um, romance, happiness, love, passion. So I put some pictures of that up, things that I wanted. Um, here is like one of my first like um, jobs that I did and also a private jet. Mm -hmm. I just want to <laughs> you gotta dream big that's what it's all about with these things right? yeah you tell me if you want to when you know that you're dreaming big is when you tell someone and they can laugh at it and then you know that's when you know that you yeah. you're pushing yourself to do something that's out of your realm you mm -hmm. know so this was my vision board and I have it in my room I look at it when I wake up in the morning I look at it before I go to sleep 
and it keeps my focus on the things that I want to attain. Mm -hmm. um, this is full of long, short-term goals, just anything right now goal. And um, I, I, for my board, I probably have more than I should on it. They try to say, they'll do some small things, but the kids, you know, they have their own that they do. And they don't, they, I taught, tried to get them. They're like, no, mom, it's private. It's for me. Okay, fine. <laughs> like, that's my <laughs> vision board. And I think that it was very important to um, just have your mind always focused on your forward movement mm -hmm. and going forward and wanting to do something. It's important to see it. Mm -hmm. um, that, that you don't forget about it and don't lose sight of it. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's great. I, I really like that you incorporated like family and sibling goals as, as well as your own personal goals. And, and that like, it's so important that you mentioned that you can't, you know, you have to keep who you are as well. And it kind of provides that of like, yes, I'm a mother and, and I'm a wife, but also I'm an individual and I can work towards my own goals and my own dreams as well. That's really right. wonderful. I think, it's important, I think it's important for your children to see that you're still working for it towards something that you still have goals that you still have things that you want to do and it helps to keep them you, you're you're the first ever living example mm. you are the first um role model whether yes. you want to believe it or not you are you're the first um interaction you know you're pretty much on a scale of the first of everything mm -hmm. you know um, how you talk, how you carry yourself, the things that you set in place for yourself. It, it's really big for them um, to see it. And the things that you talk to them about, um, and not all the time, you know, I'm a real do as I say, not as I do type of person. But sometimes, yeah, do what I do too. You know what I mean? Yes. I, I won't steer you wrong. I'm, I'm here for you. Yeah. That's so cool. Thank you. Thank you, Gina. What about you, Reagan? Any last, um, we're going to start wrapping this up. Any last uh, words or advice that you want to give? Um, never stop trying to get to your goal. You never think it's impossible to do something or achieve something that you've like wanted to do or dreamed of or think it's impossible for you to do or anybody to do. Just stay positive yeah that's wonderful thank you all right and um i do have like four questions to wrap us up um for you gina but i want to make sure you don't you if there's anything else you want to say before we move on to the closing all right awesome so um the first thing i want to ask and you can take a little bit of time to think about it is what is something you do or that you kind of want to recommend people to do for self-care <sighs> Um, so I learned about this thing called grapes, um, and each grape stands for something. It's like grateful. Um, I can't, I can't think of them all right now, but each letter stands for something. If you can Google self-care grapes, they'll pop up for you and it's like a list. Um, so something that I try and do is to exercise and work out, um, and it, it doesn't have to be, you know, super intense, like, oh, I'm dying, but just taking a walk. Mm -hmm. um, there's times in my life where I really didn't feel motivated to do anything. There's times and days that I didn't want to get out of bed, but I keep in mind to do, just do, just do. If you think of Nike, just do it, just do, mm -hmm. just do something, get up, you know, and start, start moving your body, mm -hmm. take a walk around the block. Um, and you'll always feel better once you do it. Working out releases endorphins into your brain. That makes you happy, mm -hmm. you know? Um, Another thing for self-care is just listening to your favorite song or favorite music. Um, sometimes when you sit in traffic, you're like, traffic sucks. You know what I do? I put on my favorite music, my favorite song, and I just, I'm in concert and it's okay. And I, I tell myself, it's okay. If you think you're going to be late, call ahead, let people know, you know, so you don't feel that pressure and just take it for what it is. Time with yourself, just kind of relax a little bit. Awesome. Um, sometimes my kids are like talking and they're loud. I just turn the music up over them. <laughs> tired of yelling and then you know, I can't hear them and they'll yeah. stop, you know. <laughs> that was when they were younger. I have those problems. I'm being honest, you know, and I, I would take that time like this is, you know, I don't care if the kids know the song, it's my song, you know. Yeah. Um, just um, doing things for, for you. 
Um, I go out to lunch by myself sometimes or with my husband, but you know, it's okay to treat yourself. It's okay to do things for yourself. Um, you know, if you're like in need of those, if you find yourself in need of like just some extra time, speak kind words to yourself. Mm. Um, there's not always going to be someone there to pat you on your back and tell you're doing a good job. You're doing the right thing. Sometimes you got to speak to yourself in the mirror to say, you know what? You are very talented. You are strong. You're confident. You are, um, you're a nice lady, you know, <laughs> just saying that, you yeah. know, good. you know, whatever. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever it is, I like your hair. Just say something to yourself to, you know, get your mind back on you. Thank you. Be kind to yourself. Be kind to yourself. Thank you. And that um, kind of wraps up to the next part. But if you want to add on to that, uh, what message would you like to give to parents right now? Breathe. <laughs> Breathe. Sometimes you just got to... You know, just breathe and reset yourself. Um, slow down, sit down, relax. Um, you know, be calm and then go into your plan of action of what you need to get done. Mm -hmm. But sometimes we go, 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 go. And we, you know, think we're doing good, but we're probably hurting ourselves or someone else because we're moving so quickly and we have so much on our plate and it's okay. Those deep breaths, that deep breathing, that calming down, um, you, you have to do it. You have to slow down sometimes and relax a little bit and don't be so quick to make decisions and move off, you know, emotions, you know, just take your time. I know it's frustrating raising kids frustrating going to work you know there's a lot of demands on adults on us as parents a lot of demand do this do that you're supposed to be doing this or are you a good mom are you a good dad are you you know are you doing everything right just stop and take a deep breath and knowing that you are doing the best that you can do in your situation mm -hmm. you can't look at other people and say well they're doing that <clears throat> they they have this they have that you can only I I, I only judge me mm -hmm. I'm my own critic Mm. I do self-reflection. What did I do last month that worked and what didn't work? Okay, probably don't do that again. What's a schedule that can work for me? You know, I was really big on just, you know, basically running around like a chicken with their head cut off. I have 50 million things that I'm trying to fit into four hours. Like, why are you doing that to yourself? Why are you doing that? You know, and it took me to stop, sit down, breathe, and like do things that make sense. Like, here's your plan for the day you know at nighttime when I'm like laying in the bed and sometimes my anxiety gets bad and I can't sleep I'm tossing and turning because I'm thinking about the things that I have to do well get it take them from here and put them on your phone in a notepad or in a notebook and now you see it and you're like okay this makes sense mm -hmm. well, if I drop the kids out oh, you know the store is right there right after I drop them off and go to the store then I can drop off the groceries then I can do you know you can yes. work the plan and now you can give yourself some peace because you have it you know that that would be my thought slow down and plan out your day things will go much smoother you won't miss as many things mm -hmm. and then it feels really good to go check off the list and at the end of the day you're like maybe you don't get everything done but you like i did something yeah <laughs> yeah definitely awesome yeah. i like that like celebrate what you did too mm -hmm. <clears throat> awesome and then two more things. The next thing is, what is the best advice someone has given you? Um, so over time, the, that thing has, you know, changed. I think right now, currently, where I'm at in my life, the best advice that I was given was to do what you can when you can and be kind to yourself. You know, don't be so quick to kick yourself down or beat yourself down. Like you're doing the absolute best that you can when you can, you know, and it's okay to take a break. It's fine. Mm. Nothing's going to fall through. It's okay. You know, and 
it's okay to be nice to you, to treat yourself to stuff. Don't always look at what you didn't do. Look at what you have done, you know, celebrate those things. And I think that was really good advice. And I really needed to hear that as a mom, Mm. Um, just as a woman, just, you know, I needed to hear someone tell me or give me permission that it was okay to take a break. And it's okay if you don't know everything. And it's okay to take a nap. (laughs) It's It's okay. You can go to the grocery store. Guess what? There's something in there for those kids to eat. You're okay. You know, and it was refreshing to hear someone older tell me that as a, you know, being younger to tell me that I was doing okay. And it was fine. What I was doing is it's fine and giving me permission to just chill sometimes. And um, to say, you know, you do what you can when you can. And don't stress about the things you didn't do. I feel like we put a lot of pressure on ourselves. Yeah. So that was some of the best advice I got. Take it easy. Yes. Thank you for sharing that knowledge. And the last thing, uh, take your time, but uh, what are three things you are grateful for today? Hmm. Um. I'm grateful for retirement. Super grateful for that. Yay, congrats. Just closing out a 20 year career, just closing that down um, with the movement of my limbs and just having that, you know, under my belt and being done. I'm super grateful for my children and you know, the things that the structure that's been set up because they made it so much easier day to day mm. and that they're keeping their grades up and that they're investing in themselves and they, that they're getting the picture, you know, they're, they're getting what I gave out. So mm. I feel like I'm kind of sooner than later, you know, reaping what I've sown into them. It's showing. Yeah. I'm very grateful for that growth and um, them you know, being able to express themselves freely and, you know, just do what they do. And um, I'm just grateful for life, life and health. Mm. Um, This is a scary time that we're living in, like unprecedented, like, you know, very dangerous and very uncertain and just grateful that, you know, we've been healthy and that, you know, even when you know, I, I gotten sick, um, just being just on the ship, just too much interaction being around. And, um, I just went through that time and I didn't, um, really have any side effects, you know, and I was fine, you know, but to be healthy and to be strong and to still have our home and, you know, still um, have an income. I'm very grateful for that. And I'm very happy that I was a, we were able to come through and that we're still coming through this. Mm-hmm. Grateful for life and health. Thank mm-hmm. you. Awesome. Well, thank you so much to you both for your time and your knowledge and your voice and just the amazing things you've built together as a family. And uh, the good news is that um, Regina and I are going to talk later to set a date to work, uh, hold a workshop so parents can connect and talk to her. It's going to be a live session. You can ask her questions and you can start setting up these goals for your own family and your own kids, for yourself, for your kids, for your partner, uh, or whoever you want to share it with. So um, we'll announce that as soon as we have a date set. And um, it will probably be in about a week or so just to give people time to listen to this and get exposure for this knowledge. And then we'll invite people to come in and and set a plan for their family so they can start doing the goal setting for the weekly or monthly or quarterly or however often they wish to start that. So thank you both for being here. I'm really grateful for for just having crossed paths. And um, we hope that we can continue to work and maybe think of other ideas, uh, Regina, that we can share with parents later. And if any parent is also interested in having this space and share any knowledge that they have that's working with their families or as an individual, uh, reach out to me at azucena.garcia at lemongrovesd.net and we can set a date for us to talk. And with that, I'm gonna stop this recording. Thank you again. And we hope to see you at the workshop later on. Bye-bye. Hi.